Our first guest is Dr. Kelly Tucker. He's one of my partners at the Orange County Heart Institute, and he's the Director of Cardiac Electrophysiology and Pacing. He's an internationally renowned expert in managing abnormal heart rhythms. Dr. Tucker is among the first physicians in Orange County to use artificial hearts. Thanks for coming, Kelly. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, well, Heidi. Welcome, Kelly. Kelly, you know, you've done a lot of innovative things in the years. <coughs> uh, you started the implantable defibrillators in Orange County 15 years ago. You started ablations for treating abnormal rhythms. You've written a book together, Women and Heart Disease. And now you have some extraordinary devices to show us. Why don't you show us the, uh, I believe, the first artificial heart? <coughs> Yeah, Larry, thanks. I mean, it's been a pleasure to be involved in all these great innovative uh, advances in, in cardiology. These are some of the most exciting technologies I've ever been involved in. This is the HeartMate 1 and the HeartMate 2. These are fully implantable heart pumps uh, that are, are used to assist the heart in patients who have a failing heart. And these are an alternative to heart transplantation surgery. Is the first one st uh, still in use? Or everything's going over to the second? Is this, uh, The HeartMate 1 was developed in the 90s and is fully FDA approved. And this is the FDA approved device. This is the in investigational device. And you can see it's a big jump in technology. It's much smaller, more streamlined. It has less moving parts. But this is still under investigation. And I expect it will be approved by the FDA in probably one to two years. So now, can you show us how that hooks up? I know it's yeah, a little Yeah, the device is fully implantable, and it's implanted in, in the abdomen, but it hooks into the heart itself. So part of it would hook into the heart here and come back into the aorta, but it's fully implantable, uh, except for the power source. And the power source would come out through the patient's abdomen through a cuff, and that would be the, just this little wire here, and that plugs into a battery source. The battery source is worn by a vest, patient wears a little vest, it almost looks like uh, cowboys and Indians, like six guns, two pair of six guns, and they, they're large batteries similar to what you might put in a computer, and those batteries give the patient approximately six hours. When the patient's at home at night, they just plug right into the wall, and they get charged up. I remember the first pacemakers were carried around in a shopping cart, and now, of course, they're this big, and this is the same evolution, but, I mean, this will help so many people, because congestive heart failure is what you're treating, right? What is the number in congestive heart failure these days? Yeah, there's, a, there's about five million Americans in congestive heart failure, and uh, many of those patients will get to the end stage and need a new heart. Unfortunately, there's only gonna be about 2,000 heart transplants in the United States. So for 4,980,000 patients or more, there's no therapy available. However, this new therapy could be available for all of those patients. And it's a fully implantable heart pump. It's, a, it's an open heart procedure, but it only takes a few hours. And the recovery times are similar to open heart bypass surgery, a few weeks. And they're up and around. And uh, basically, they feel like they have a brand new heart. That's and amazing. How many people worldwide have this device? Uh, several thousand people have, have the HeartMate 1. And there's about 1,000 patients with the HeartMate 2. Two. But this, again, is currently under investigation only available in Orange County through the Orange County Heart Institute. So if somebody was interested in looking into this and, and they'd have to get a re physician referral because it's obviously very technically Yeah, uh, I mean, the patients, the patients who need it are the patients with congestive heart failure. And that is a syndrome that patients with a weak heart get into in which they begin to retain salt and water and, and have trouble getting around doing their daily daily life. Uh, many of them have trouble just walking across the room. Really? Uh, for instance, a patient we're going to visit uh, later, she could barely get across the room. Now with the new heart pump, she goes to the mall, she can <laughs> walk around the block, she can take her pets out for a walk. I mean, she has a normal, a normal life it's now. It's amazing. Well, recently we went to the office and um, looked at the, our patient. Why don't we uh, go there now? Okay, let's go see her. Nancy Miller's story is a fantastic story. She had congestive heart failure. So we recommended a pacemaker defibrillator that has the ability to strengthen the heart. And that was implanted approximately five years ago. It helped her immediately. And over the next two years, she did great. But unfortunately, she got older. And eventually, she got almost as bad as she had been previously. I was very weak. and. Uh... I couldn't walk from one room to the next without getting out of breath. And it was clear that she was going to die soon unless we did something else. I had already maximized her medications 
our diet, everything else was being paid close attention. So I made the referral to the Sharp Memorial Hospital in San Diego, where they're now doing a fully implantable heart pump as final destination therapy. So this is fully implantable in the chest, but attached by conduits to the heart. And so the heart can beat, but all the flow goes through the device. Now in Nancy's case, she had a metal valve in her heart to begin with. She had aortic valve surgery many, many years ago. The surgeons who installed the Thoratec heart pump over -sewed the valve. And so all the flow in Nancy's case comes through the device back into her aorta and bypasses the heart. And because the device is a spinning, is continuous flow, then Nancy has no heartbeat and no pulse. And yet her blood flow is, is normal, just as good as yours and mine. It's a big surgery, it's open heart surgery, but she survived it despite the fact that she was very seriously ill. And now, now she's uh, outperforming her daughter. She can go to the mall, she can go on long walks, she can go to family outings. I'm able to uh, wash dishes, I'm able to uh, clean up after myself, I'm able to bathe myself, I'm able to do everything that everyone else does. You know, unfortunately, nine out of 10 cardiologists would have said to Nancy, hey, there's nothing else we can do for you. You're just gonna live out your days and you're gonna be short of breath and you're not gonna be able to walk more than 100 feet. We did not have that approach. We said, no, we think we can help you with advanced technology and uh, this fully implantable heart pump is the next iteration. Prognosis is fantastic. I mean, this is a mechanical device. As long as the device doesn't break, she's gonna, she could live, outlive some of us. The heart pump will last me five or 10 years. But someday it may need to be replaced. It only has two moving parts, so it's a very simple device. If something goes wrong, parts can be replaced. But getting a heart transplant couldn't be replaced. It is attached now to a battery pack that she has to wear. Got me these, uh, these batteries which I have to carry around, but that's a nice exchange for your life, isn't it? And that's the major limitation of this technology today, is that the batteries are too large to be fully implantable. And so there's a little wire that comes out of the patient, and there's a cuff that has to be maintained. Infection is the major problem, but as long as the patient cleans it and takes very careful care of it, uh, they don't seem to get infected. And then she has to wear like two six guns. These are like batteries, very similar to a battery you would put in a computer, in a laptop. And, uh, but you know, five years from now, I think we'll have a leap in battery technology and the whole system will be fully implantable. When that occurs, it's gonna replace bypass surgery, it's gonna replace pacemaker systems, it's gonna replace all the technology we know today. Within five years, it's gonna become standard and may even replace bypass surgery and pacemakers and all of that, this will be the device of choice in the future. But Nancy's case is quite remarkable and, and she's just done beautifully well with the device. Well, that was fantastic. I mean, I, you don't understand how significant this is unless you really talk to these people and see how limited their lives and miserable they were. I mean, it's a great, a, a great device and I'm glad you brought this to Orange County and uh, always been cutting edge but you also have another fantastic device there that I think is um, also cutting edge why don't you explain the other device that you have <clears throat> this is the watchman device and this is I think one of the most exciting technologies I've ever been involved with this is a device that's delivered into the heart through this catheter system I put it in through the vein of the leg right into the heart and then I deliver this little device which is a little umbrella or filter and this filter protects the patient from stroke and allows the patient to get off of the powerful and dangerous blood thinners that they might be on, such as Coumadin or Warfarin. So this is an alternative to Coumadin or Warfarin for stroke protection, and it's delivered into the heart. We deliver it right into the heart, and when we like the position that it's delivered into, I release it by unscrewing this cable, and the device stays permanently in their heart. Now, is this a painful procedure? Does it require general anesthesia? No, it's not a painful procedure at all. It's actually done under local anesthetic with light sedation. We just numb up the area of the leg, put this device right into the heart, and because there are no nerve endings in your heart, patients are semi-awake, but they don't feel anything at all. They have no pain or discomfort. Unbelievable. And they're up and around the same day, and they go home the next day. Unbelievable. Yeah.
My uh, goodness. You know, and taking Coumadin is really a big deal. I mean, or, or warfarin is the other name for it because it requires constant monitoring. You have to get blood tests every month. Drugs, foods interfere with it. If it's not watched carefully, you can have a bleeding problem or um, you can even have a stroke because you're, it's not adequately adjusted. It's very difficult to manage. So this is a great, it's a free, it gives people freedom and uh, from, from, the, from the warfarin. We're about out of time, but just once again, this is only for people who have atrial fibrillation. Yeah, this is an alternative to stroke prevention in patients who are on Coumadin or warfarin because of their underlying abnormality of their heart called atrial fibrillation. It's where the top chambers are just yeah. wiggling rather than beating. Well, th <coughs> thanks for coming, Kelly. This is exciting technology. I mean, we're lucky to you know have you at the Orange County Heart Institute and bringing all this exciting stuff for us, and I think it's going to save a lot of lives. Well, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me.